Uh, I mean, I knew that the system was intellectually corrupt, uh, that it was, uh, people have used the word uh, broken. I would dispute that. It was, it's not broken, it's dysfunctional. Broken implies that at one time it was not broken. It's always been broken. You know, I've been opposed to the death penalty all of my life. I mean, since I was a little kid, I, I just remember having these notions of what if they got the wrong guy? I mean, I lived in southwest Missouri. Missouri had a death penalty. Um, I mean, I was literally five or six years old, and this, these thoughts were occurring to me. What if they got the wrong guy? Uh, that was all. Uh, and, you know, it was always kind of troubling in the back of my mind. And, and uh, um, so I'm not sure that anything really changed me. I am not a religious person. Uh, in fact, um, I am an atheist, and I've been one since I was a sophomore in high school. And um, the, uh, so it's nothing like that. Uh, it's just that this system doesn't work, and I'm really offended by the notion that I live in a country that will railroad people onto death row, certainly execute innocent people. I'm sure it's happened many times. And sentence juveniles to life in prison without the possibility of parole, which we have done in this nation up until today. Today, this very day, June 25th, 2012, the United States Supreme Court held no more juvenile Elwa, life in prison without parole. Frankly, it just doesn't work and we've got to do something, we gotta do some things to make it work. We can't help everybody. We simply can't. Uh, it, and it's painful, yes, it's very painful. So one of the things that I learned, if you can imagine, <clears throat> if you can imagine what it's like to say, be a cancer specialist, if you get tight, if you get close to your patient, uh, this is going to be devastating to you, this will kill you, it'll drive you, it'll drive you crazy. Uh, you would be in grief all the time. Uh, that's one of the things that we have to sort of practice here. You have to keep a distance from the, the client. Uh, you know, when my young, one of my sons um, was, was a young student at, at Francis Parker, Dennis Williams was still on death row and he'd call my house at night, collect, and I made the mistake of letting him talk to my son, Billy. And Billy became friends over the telephone with Dennis Williams. And I suddenly realized, my God, what's this going to do to my child if Dennis Williams is executed? I mean, this will be devastating to him. And I vowed I will never let anything like that happen again. I, uh, I, I just, you, you've got to insulate yourself and your family from these things, because if you don't, uh, it can be absolutely devastating.